Hi, art school children of the world. I never knew I wanted to be a photographer. When, and when I first moved out here, I wasn't like, I'm going to come to California and be a skateboard photographer. I just was like, I just want to skateboard. I just want to have fun. I would see like Gabe Morford and Tobin, like down at Embarcadero shooting photos. And I was like, whoa, man, this is crazy. This is what you guys do? Like I had some shitty job at Express Limited at a women's clothing store. And then I ended up meeting a bunch of skaters and I went to, to San Diego to go skate. And it was weird because there was this photographer there, and I was like, oh my gosh, dude, that's the guy that I have the most photos on my wall. Like, a lot of his photos. And there was this guy, Daniel Harold, Harold Stewart. Stewart, and um, he shot, like, a lot of photos just different. His, he shot, like, just his photos looked different at the time. And I was tripping out. I was like, wow, that's Dan Stewart. And I was asking him questions. I was like, hey, so what are you doing, like, right now? And he's like, hey, kid, what are you doing? I was like, asking any questions. He's like, you see what I'm doing? This is my bread and butter. He's like, you see that corner? Go sit in that corner. Shortly thereafter, I ended up hurting my back really bad. And I was on workers' comp. So I was like, oh, screw it. I'm going to start going to school. So I went to City College in San Francisco. And I was either going to take ceramics or photography. So I was like, oh, I'll take photography. <clears throat> and uh, I just loved it, man. Like, right out of the gates. Like, I didn't know what I was doing. But I was like, I just want to take photos. And I think the thing that I liked about it the most was just walking the streets of San Francisco with a camera. Gabe helped me out a lot with just, you know, talking about shutter speeds and f-stops and flashes and flash durations. When Lance was running slap and I would come in here, I'd ride my bike in, I'd pedal my bike in, this bike I bought off a crackhead up in the Tenderloin for 20 bucks. <laughs> I'd ride my bike in here and with all these photos, Lance would put them on the light table and I'd be like, and I thought they were good photos and Lance would be like, with a wax pencil, this sucks, this sucks, this sucks, this sucks. And I was like, what, well, you're a dick, man. And then, like, there were some photos that he liked, and then he would always give me, like, two rolls of film. And that was, like, my glimmer of hope. Like, the kind of, like, feedback that he was giving me, it wasn't, like, nurturing. You know, like, it wasn't like, oh, you know, your photos are going to get better. It was more like, this sucks, and this is the reason that this sucks. you got to get closer. Your lighting sucks. I would ride my bike home, and I'd be so pissed. I'd be like, fuck you, Lance. I'm going to shoot better photos than you. Fucking asshole. But it just made me want it more. You know what I mean? And I, you know, like, I don't know. Some people don't like to hear that. And it could have been discouraging, but to me, I kind of like fed off of it. I don't even know what, this, what the bank is there for. It's, it might be a ball return or something. I'm not even too sure. It's all like all the skaters and all the kids. And we start racing across the parking lot, just running. And like midway through, those kids just start doing like gymnastic flips and stuff like that. Just like doing, and I'm like, wow, man, these kids are super talented. He did a backflip off this thing. This kid's probably like 12 years old, you know, and he's got superhuman ability. I was on an alien tour in Omar. I think it was like almost the last month to film. So I had a, like, I had like Tyler Bledsoe, Arto Sari, Omar. So we went to this water park and Omar was just like a kid in a candy store. He was just shredding the shit out of this water slide. And basically it's two that go next to each other and just snake down. So I was like, I know Omar can skate this thing, he'll kill it. So we had him flying to St. Louis. The Australian filmer could not follow Omar down the water slides because was, he was going so fast. I got the photos already and Omar's like, oh, I just want to do one more, I just want to do one more. And I'm like, dude, I got the photo, I'm fine. He's like, no, I want to get really close to you. And I'm like, all right, one more. So I'm sitting at the bottom of it, coming, he comes around the corner. He jumped off his board, but he shot his board at me at the same time so fast, reflects off my shin bone. I crawl out of there and I'm just looking at my leg and I'm like, I feel sick. I'm getting like hot flashes and I'm like, oh my gosh, dude, this is not good. Like three days later, my leg was purple, dude, from my knees to my toes. I called it Purple Source Rex. It was so insane and it had so much fluid in it. We're driving across the US, my leg is just fucked. Then I'm like, you know what? I was like, I'm so tired I can't even drive. So we pull over on the salt flats and Bonneville Dunes, and I was like, fuck it, let's light off all the fireworks. Roman Candle Wars, everything was blowing up, like, everyone's going crazy. Then I see two headlights pulling up, like, in the distance, and I'm like, I'm like, all right, guys, if you have beer and weed or acid or whatever the hell you guys got on you, hide that shit. So the cops pull up, they're like, oh, whose van? I'm like, mine. And they're like, okay, you're going to jail, and everyone's getting fines. And I'm like, oh, shit. So the cop's like, all right, he's like, what's going on? And I'm like, uh, we're just, we had all these fireworks, we wanted to blow them off somewhere where we didn't burn down a field. And we figured the salt flats would be a good place. And then he's like, well, fireworks are illegal in Utah. And then I tried to Jedi mind trick him, and I was like, oh, I thought we were in Nevada. And he was like, no. 
And then he came around and saw the American flag on the side. And he's like, okay, what the hell are you guys up to? And I was like, we're just patriots. And the cop was like, all right, man, here's the deal. I'll give you 20 minutes to blow off the rest of your fireworks and get the hell out of here. We were so freaked out at that point that we just were like, let's get the fuck out of here. So we kept on driving. At first, I was actually scared to go because everyone's like, oh my God, Skatopia. It's 100% skateboarding, you know? Like the guy that, that made it, Bruce Martin, um, has 88 acres of anarchy. You know, he has a spring and a fall party, bands come and play. He also does um, building parties where people come out and just build for, for a while. It's just crazy because people just come from the Midwest in droves. They camp out in the fields and, you know, they, they blow up cars, as you can see, that one burning. And, um, you know, Bruce has this little, his limousine right here, which he actually blew up. He basically built a house. And his house is the Skateboard Museum, which he has the most insane collection of skateboards. And a lot of crazy shit happens at Skatopia, and if you want to take it to 11, you could get there real easy. You know, I take it to about 2, I keep it mellow and stuff, but people really, people really get crazy. And the things that you hear about Skatopia are pretty much true. I look over, and there's a sparrow in the rat trap. And I was like, you caught the wrong thing, man. Spike Jones doing the car jump. Like Spike is awesome, man. That's like the first time I ever met the dude. Like I've seen his movies, I've seen his skate photos, like I've seen all like blind video days, all the stuff that he's worked on. They were like, yeah, we want to jump a car. Like we want to have a car jump for it. So we would be on cell phones and he would call us and be like, hey, I'm going to jump. Be ready to move. And I'm like, of course I'm going to move because I'm going to shoot the photo and get the hell out of the way. And I think he was going about 60 or 65 and he was airborne. And it's crazy to see a big American car just flying through the air in person and like no movie set, just be like boom, 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 boom. We were all like super happy and like, wow, like it was crazy. And we just literally, everyone just jumped in the, in the vans and everything and we just took off after because it was highly illegal maneuvers.